Hey guys, it's Devo Primo from Lyrical Reviews. Enjoy this segment from one of our episodes and make sure to check us out on Afro Vibes Radio Houston. The game when they put them together. Yeah, I still don't get the uh, the whole piano thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they just kind of randomly just showed up. <laughs> just dun, dun. You're like, whoa, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, welcome back, y'all. If, if you're just now joining us, you're listening to Lyrical Reviews on Afro Vibes Radio Houston. I'm your host, Debo Primo. I am joined <laughs> with none other than Stephanie McD Neal. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Kyle Lee. Hey. And our special guest, uh, let me see, no OG granny? We're, we're, we're talking uh, GG. 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 Yes. <laughs> special guest, GG. <laughs> so if you missed the first half of this show, we, we covered a long uh, span of music from Fela Ramsukuti. Yeah. And um, and a lot of his music from 1973 to 1985. Yeah. So. Now, there are some other songs that we didn't play. Uh, Beast of No Nation, which is another classic. And Fusion Break Bone, another classic. Yeah. So uh, make sure you check those out. You know, we just obviously. We just gave you a taste. Just a little, taste. Just a little bit. Just yeah. a little taste. <laughs> now, mind you, we only played like six or so minutes of these songs. These songs are 30 minutes long. Each. So, you know, Each. we just played you a little snippet of it. But, uh, I mean, what are you guys' thoughts right now? I mean, it's that's, that was a lot. That we <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Gigi, uh, you, your face looks like you were trying to say something. Well, I don't want to dominate, you oh. know. No, no, that's no, what, no. That's you're, what, you're, that's you're, what Gigi's you're, do. You're coming but, to, you know. <laughs> we, we welcome your opinion, your yeah. words. Well, my thing is that, you know, when I listen to um, music like his or like uh, Nina Simone or uh, any of the uh, Miriam Makub- Makiba, there are so many protest singers who've really taken a chance of being unpopular with the government, trying to make change in their society. Yeah. That, uh, Free music. Yeah. yeah. They, they live on the edge and they live in danger, but they don't live in fear. And what I love about the type of music that he did, yeah. he understood that it was his calling. Right. Because the music that uh, he talked, that he sang, that we showed uh, clips of, yeah. like when he talked about religion being a drug, that is something that I have believed my whole life. I mean, I <laughs> I started off in the Christian church because that's where all black people in America start, uh, and I went to Islam, and I've been I've been the whole Everybody. religion <laughs> thing. But um, he's tr- he's telling the truth. Right. We are given religion as a drug to justify our suffering, to justify our uh, belittling and justify our poverty and justify everything that this society has put on us. And not just here in America, but, you know, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, they, (laughs) they have taken the cross in front of a gun. You either got the cross, you accept it, or we come along with that gun. South America, Africa, Asia, all of yeah, them. Yeah, you make It's that been case around the world. Yes, uh, any land. colonizer. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, we we've become bigger fanatics than they are. It's their religion, but we, we are the fanatics. We took it and ran with it. <laughs> it and ran. that just irks me no end. We're living for <laughs> the day that we die. Things are going to be better when I die. Yeah. No, because you'll be dead. Yeah, you got to do stuff while you're here and you're aware. And the, you know? the other side of that is he mentions the fact that rich people in, in these religious leaders are living the high life right now. Anyway, and they right want, now. Their heaven is now. Right now. And they don't want to leave here. Yeah. You don't see them trying to get out of here in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They got the money to kind of prolong it a little, you know. <laughs> a lot. <Yeah. laughs> What I thought was interesting when we were going through his history, yeah, the fact that each time he got arrested or something happened to him, he would always bounce back. And even the moment where, like, the raid, yeah, you would think after... Yeah, he would just be defeated. You right, know? Like that, that's, that's it. Obviously, I've crossed the line. Like, they've tolerated my shenanigans long enough. I think I'm done. No. 
No, he came back with more songs. He's just like, you know what? I'm gonna take. This I'm gonna be on the. I'm gonna be on the stage an hour now. How about right. that? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of how they have these rap beefs. How like one person put a diss track out and another person put a diss track yeah. out. Where instead of he would put a diss track out, they would just go and attack him. Yeah. And then he would put another diss track out, and then they would go and attack him. And it was just like take it. It, yeah. it was like these governments. They were. How dare you tell the truth? They were so insecure about people not subscribing to what they were putting out exactly. that all they could do was react with violence instead of reacting with any Exactly. Other sort of, and he of wasn't violence. even retaliating with violence. He was like, I'm just putting it in a song. I don't know why y'all come and beat me yeah. up. You he was know, telling basically. people to just say no or to find other, other yeah, ways. Yeah, just think for yourself and do something. Where they were things. like, no, this yeah. is the only way this is going to happen. Yeah. And it was really, what I really liked about this whole, this whole story, really. Yeah. His life is just this one big giant story. It's the fact that, you know, the black people were involved with this story in America. Like, a yeah. lot of times, especially when it comes to African history, there's this perception that black people have zero part None. in African history. <laughs> like, you guys got we're shipped off. We're just over off. here. Yeah, we're yeah, just you, over you here. you guys got shipped off, and then that was it. Yeah. Right? But the fact that we had all these influences, um, that, that helped start this revolution in a way. You yeah. Know, we had people really kind of thinking about things and say hey you know what maybe i don't have to accept yeah maybe he's this right military regime yeah um now we're the people we can change it yeah enough of us come together anyway you know and, and he had the fortitude <laughs> to build the shrine like the shrine is an amazing accomplishment in itself considering yeah and he was the, just a citizen you yeah know? The, the, the government didn't like you anyway the fact yeah. that you were able to build <laughs> Mm-hmm. A place where you could play your music and everybody came in, and it's still, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a holy site, but it's like, uh, it's a tourist attraction for sure. Like, yeah. People, if that, they go to Nigeria, I'm a historical landmark. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they want to go to the shrine. Yeah. It's like, that's where we're going to go first. We're going to go there. <laughs> that's just wild. Yeah. But you have to understand that that's the way they handle everything. When you were saying that, you know, they attack him with violence after he just puts out a record, that's the only weapon they have. That's because all I got. <laughs> I, I always told the kids that, you know, the devil has to tell on himself. And everybody wants to make somebody else the devil. But yeah, so they just put you the- can see who the real devil is if you just look at the history. Yeah. Because everybody, whether it be the Black Panthers in America... Herbert Hoover and them attacked them. They're just out trying to defend, you and know, their and communities secure and their stuff. community. Yeah. They weren't trying to go mm-hmm. into the white neighborhood. They just wanted to take care of their they community. They were defending that little small area that you gave them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're so 40 we're acres and a mule. Yeah, we're trying to protect this over here. And you didn't, even want, we got. <laughs> you didn't even want them to do that. So, you know, and, and Herbert Hoover... I am not a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist. <laughs> I just believe in truth. I believe that there was a a little mole that was around when Malcolm X was killed. There was a mole when Martin Luther King was killed. There was a mole when Marcus Garvey was tattled on. Mm -hmm. There was a mole when, you know, the Black Panthers were attacked every time. It's always destruction from the inside. Nate Turner. And and Yes. And when Eldridge Cleaver took the Panthers to Algeria, those people really embraced it because they understood that what they he were trying to knew do. what those people had been through. Yeah. Because it was, they could look over an American and go, yeah, that's why you left. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's why you gone. <laughs> uh, there was one quote that um, Fella said during one of his interviews. I forgot who he was talking to. I think it was one of the, talking like one of the like BBC or something. Yeah. And he was just like, Everybody wants to talk about South Africa and how apartheid is so bad. <laughs> He's just like, you know, people aren't talking about what's happening in Nigeria. Like, black people are doing worse things to black people here. <laughs> well, just like when you were talking about the money that, that disappeared. Every country America has put money into, whether it be Papa Doc in Haiti, whether it be, it doesn't matter. When you put that money in there... Somebody skims off the money and mistreats the people. <laughs> Doing little things, yeah. You know, it, it, it's yeah. it's not new. They have one. They're a one trick pony. Yeah, they it's just are like the same. A it's like pony. they have the same manual. <laughs> and Trump's things. got it now. Yeah. He's a one trick pony too. Yeah, <laughs> one trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, who do you think his uh, greatest influences were? You know, for uh, Phila. I, I, we, since we were going through his history, 
we, we know his mom was a very big activist and yeah. we were looking at her story we were like dang she was for a woman she was handling business right. <laughs> holding it down mm-hmm. what do you think kyle i mean i think the mother is always going to be most people's first like inspiring person if you look at a lot of the stuff that she did like yeah, but she put the work in, she, you know. <laughs> she, like, like, like most, if not all, African women did all the work so their children can prosper. Yeah, uh, I know she was a she was a big activist. She was one of the first. She was one of the first women to drive a car in Nigeria. In Nigeria, that's crazy. Yeah, it just, it just, like she like by herself. Yeah. Or? <laughs> they, she's also been called like the mother of of Nigeria. If I'm and not he mistaken. mentions that in uh, in unknown, this song. Yeah, yeah unknown soldier like, mentions that. She's yeah. like a she she in my opinion she's really like a super feminist. Yeah. Without the whole you know negativity or anything against men, it was more of just empowering women, giving Go women more opportunities. <laughs> and you know, and of course, you know, I. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure of all his musical influences, but I do know that when he came back from from uh, Los Angeles and he saw the Black Panther movement, that definitely did inspire him. When he yeah, came, and went Sandra back. played a big part. Sandra, of Sandra, yeah, yeah, she was. As yeah. far as does Sandra have a last name? She does. I don't know. It. Yeah, we okay. did. We, they never put it. Yeah, they never put it. Sure, they girl. never put it out there. We keep calling her Sandra, and I just feel like that's yeah. her first name. That yeah. was her name. But it's gonna be a bunch his, of women named Sandra trying to clear Yeah. <laughs> speaking on his musical influences, he did listen to a lot of John Coltrane. Yeah. And uh, he actually would influence. practice using his music. Like yeah, when he was starting the, out. Yeah, like he would. He would. That, that's the saxophone influences for sure. Um. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a tricky one, right? Obviously, the, his mother planted the seeds. And, and, he, and he just flourished. Right. And, and his, um, his family mentioned the fact that when he was younger, his mom would take him out to these meetings. Oh, had, okay. She had different meetings with uh, people in Nigeria and also in Ghana, and he would be there. Okay. You know, just listening in on, on some of these conversations. So he was aware, too, of what was going on, right. of everything. Mm-hmm. I think... Yeah. I think when it comes to that shift, because the shift did happen after he came back from the U.S. Yeah. As far as his music, because mm-hmm. most of his music before the U.S. was more happy go lucky. Oh yeah, we let's say let's dance, oh, let's um, do this, hey, what? Way, let's go. <laughs> her name was Sandra Smith, though now it's Sandra Isidore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, she's married now to a different person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say it's <laughs> it's not fifty fifty because it was already a foundation built mm-hmm. from his mother, but uh, Sandra's kind of the one that brought it out and said, "Hey, look." You know, you yeah, we're over platform. here doing this too. You yeah, do I this. think he had to see it in a whole other land for him to really understand yeah. like, what it yeah. meant to go back home. Like, if these people over here are treating you this way, why are my own people treating me the same way? Yeah, back and in we're Nigeria? we're all black. We're all supposed to be unified, and yeah. Yeah, it's not like that. Plus, plus he wasn't he wasn't building a crowd. Like singing that type of music, and there's no one that wants to hear yeah, it. Yeah, his audience. You got to yeah. reflect yeah. and look at yourself, and like, okay, well, what is what important? do the people want? What's going yeah. on? What, yeah, what's, yeah, what's necessary right now? And right now, yeah. people need to be inspired. Yeah, yeah. But I, like um, with the mother thing, I think of uh, Obama also, because even though his mother was white, when she took him to Indonesia and to yeah, she different traveled. places, yeah, she she taught him how people really are the same I everywhere mean, and yeah. i think that's he had to come here to see the difference because he knew what it was like over there i mean he was raised there especially yeah. for him to go to like la of LA, all places LA, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like he yeah. went to vermont he went to <laughs> yeah he's like you going to the deaths yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first place even trevor noah said that he went and uh, la was the place that he could not believe because it was so different there were Mexicans living there. Everybody, I mean, you came from South Africa. What do you know about a Mexican? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. know about a, Mexican. <laughs> a comedy club or someone of other. Well, people don't Asian. know is that that place used to be Mexico. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Tijuana right there at the border. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. it's just right there. Same with Texas, so yeah, it's like, San Jose, all of that. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> but it's a, it's amazing how you know when people come here, they see a whole different different world. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it expands their horizon, so they won't. So yeah, so they won't be stuck in one train of thought. They be like, oh, okay, well, there's another way to do this, or there's another way, and right. you know, they can, and then they can develop their own, you know, mind for that. And the great, the great thing about, uh, actually, I had a conversation the other day talking exactly about this. Yeah. And uh, it goes both ways too, right? A lot of folks in the U.S. stay here, and 
a lot of times the worldview is is extremely small, especially like in, in a state like Texas. Yeah. <laughs> the worldview world is extremely small because this is all they know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They only know Texas. They don't know anything outside of Texas. And, and or else, definitely outside of this country, they don't know anything about that. And the, the conceptions you know, that you have of, of people and cultures um, changes if you actually go and firsthand meet the people. Yeah. Well, a lot of these people in Houston don't even go to Dallas. I mean, they, <laughs> it's a whole different I was, thing. I was amazed when I came here in 84 and I found out people didn't even travel that five hours to go to Dallas. Mm. And they're like, I'm in. I'm from Houston, and I'm because staying here. A, you know, like it was a different country. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things that he mentioned in one of his songs too was that you know people think the apartheid in South Africa is so bad. It was almost like you don't know what's going on over here in these other countries in Africa. And yeah. it's true. Every each one of them had their own issues going on. Yeah. Because they were all colonized. Yeah. Whether it be Portugal, France, Germany, it didn't, yeah. England, it didn't yeah, matter. it was all You yeah, still had a white up. folks running yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> the Nigerians up. did not create Nigeria. Yeah. You know, they didn't make their borderlines or anything like that. that. That was all made by somebody else, and they just had to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, at one point, that was just Africa. I, I, land. Yeah. <laughs> I was Different talking. T- I was talking mm-hmm. to one of the seniors at the senior center I go to, and and I met a, a African, and I asked her, I "said Where are you from?" She goes, "I'm from Africa." I said, "But what country?" She goes, "Africa." Oh <laughs> my gosh! Okay. <laughs> she said, "It's all Africa." <laughs> she said, "It wasn't uh, the Congo. She wasn't Congo when she was born." So oh. she just knows Africa. Oh, and okay. Like, they didn't split oh up. God. All right. Didn't... It makes sense, though. <laughs> it yeah. was. But... but that's how it was. Like, you, you had your tribal group. Yeah. But you went whenever you, wherever you went. Like, yeah. That, it wasn't like a... <laughs> she told me this. She goes, I'm from Africa. Just Africa. Just yeah, one word. Like, Ghana. <laughs> like Prince. The, just you know? Africa. Because it's, it's not like, it's not like people look different. Like, everybody was African. Everybody yeah. was black. Yeah. Unless you were white. Yeah. Because, so, yeah, I mean, and look at how many different names those countries have had. I mean, there was Rhodesia because Rhodes went to England and said, Queen, give me this land. And she signed it over to him, the Zulu land. That wasn't yours to give, Queen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you just signed it, stuff away. So he made it Rhodesia. And then it wasn't Rhodesia anymore. And I'm like, okay, that Ooh. makes no, no sense. sense. So where were the all. people born? Yeah. <laughs> What country are you from exactly? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so do y'all uh, think that, do you think he has a point when he says that we as a people care more about normal life and materialism than fighting for several uh, citizen rights? Oh. But what is normal life? So what yeah. he refer, like in the song, he well, mentioned yeah. that we focus on, oh, I, I want a house, I want a wife, you know, I, I want a steady job. <laughs> a wife. <laughs> no, I, I know. What, I see what you. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give that one to you. I'm gonna give that one to you. That was actually really good. I know what he means by, but when he says we focus on normal life, because no two people have the same concept of what a normal life is. Yeah. I don't want a wife. Okay, well, for for the fellas, <laughs> wife, <laughs> for the ladies, <laughs> husband. I don't want. Or now, well, nowadays it could go either way. You know what you into, but but. No, but I've done his, that once is enough. Okay, once okay. Is well, enough. Gigi has been there, done that. We're then talking about the rest. Of <laughs> but to, I guess th- there is there is a defined sense of normal, and that's what is advertised. Yeah. So there there is a definition of normal. And it's the thing that is promoted the most on TV. It's the thing that's promoted in schools. It's the thing that everyone talks about they want to achieve. Yeah. And those are those things have been the same for those. Yeah. Those I mean, it was, it was it was it was the key in his time period, and it's still present right now. My grandson tells me that we're not talking about you, Granny, <laughs> <laughs> because. I don't want any of the things that are advertised. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't I don't want a big house. I don't want a big car. I don't want I don't want any of that. I don't want a bunch of red bottom shoes. Oh, okay. I don't Not I don't want any of that. No. <laughs> I had what I wanted. Yes. I wanted my kids. I wanted a living and a comfortable life. That's it. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. I'm ready. I could I'm like Barbara Bush on this one. 
I could check out today and I'm good. Oh, okay. Well, we don't want that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and uh, the, the other part of that, too, is, you know, he said that, that people don't want to fight for their freedoms. Like, we, we want to just... Just Make sit back and easy. yeah, and we we want these things, but we don't want to fight for them. Yeah. yeah, and let them know that this is what we want. They just like yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah. I'll, I'll accept this abuse because you know it's, yeah. accepting this abuse is a lot easier than actually going going out and fight. Because and then some people don't know where to start with stuff like that. That's true. So what do you yeah. mean where to start? Well, where to like start that? the fight? You know, it's like they can all congregate and have meetings, but they don't know like maybe who to go to to start it. And Vila just on the stage singing about it, you know, kind of thing. But you know, as far as like you know, citizens, we're just sitting around like we know there's something we need to do. What can we do? And you know, and that's pretty much it. Starts, you know, everybody's all yeah, and then okay, where are we gonna go? I don't know. You know, and then it gets crickets, and then mm-hmm. then they like, okay, yeah, we're gonna go to eat now. We're we're done. <laughs> well, <laughs> just, <laughs> but now this is the thing I don't understand. Back in the day, and I think it's a time schedule too, probably a timeline, because back in the day, the church was the center of, of the, the community. black community. Yeah, and you could go there to get food, everything. I know my Help. my grandmother was uh, the midwife. Oh, and okay. you know, she was delivering, you, the she was delivering the babies. She delivering the babies. Delivered darn near everybody in Forest City, Arkansas. <laughs> so, but that was her calling. That was her thing. Yeah. And if anybody needed, you know, that you just give her a chicken and she delivered you a baby, right? Yeah. <laughs> in like church. Well, the, yeah, it didn't take the much. The church <laughs> was the center. Why is the church not the center? Why are these people looking for a, a private jet like Creflo Dollar and yeah, all of them? Yeah, yeah. You know, why are they having to split split off the people to, I want you to listen to what I'm saying because yeah. my message is different than, I thought you were all supposed to have the same Bible. The calling. I thought we had the calling. I thought the Lord called you. Why are there you six and, or seven of y'all on the same street? Yeah. I know. That's yeah. my question because yeah. that's not a community anymore. We it's are not, not it's divided. a community. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like divided. having a It's like having like a Popeye's and a church's and a KFC, and a KFC on the same street, but y'all all still chicken. Yeah. So the community thing is, is a good point. And a lot of that has to do with technology, and um, as we've gotten more into technology, we've kind of detached ourselves from the physical people around us. Because now the sense of community is not necessarily the folks that you live around, it's more of the people that you talk to and interact with on social, social media. Because yeah. you're only looking for people who have the same idea as you do. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't, need you. I don't need you to have the same idea I do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have my idea. Anyway, yeah. And I'll discuss it with you because you're not going to change my idea unless you have some darn good argument. Exactly. Yeah. And proof. Yeah. And I think that's what he was. I believe in people having a calling. I really do believe in that. I believe that there are prophets. I believe that there are legit you know, prophets. Le- yeah, legit. <laughs> and I think when people like a uh, fellow, you have a calling and you're willing to take, or Mandela, you're willing to take whatever life brings you and you consider that your responsibility of your life, your Demand purpose. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. For your life. No matter what, yeah. And, you know, the beating, the mistreatment, and all that. He still came it comes back. With the, yeah, it comes with the territory. They're still going to come back stronger. That's that uncomfort he was talking about. Where yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I'm going to speak against stuff, and I know what's coming. Yeah. I know you. what's coming. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just so going to go ahead and take it. To, to wrap all this up, uh, one thing I, I would like to challenge, especially. When you look at music today, a lot of music in the 70s and 60s was all inspirational and, and reflection of, of what life was like. Um, the music today, and this spans genres. This, we're talking about Afrobeat. We're talking Everything, about yeah. Caribbean. We're talking about hip hop. Music today is all about dating, parties, <laughs> jewelry, <laughs> buying, <laughs> things. No. Wait, you saying today? Because that's what hip-hop's been about. I mean, that's what music's been about for a very long time. Yes. Well, that's what, but I'm saying there was a shift. <laughs> yeah, it was right? a shift, Like Before, it? The, the vast majority of music was that con- what's labeled as conscious. Yeah. Right? That was the vast majority for of music. For the people, yeah. And now, the vast majority of music is party. 
And I'm not saying that's wrong, but what I am saying is that it's it's different. It causes what it causes is a public that is distracted. Yeah. From its issues. True, but at the same time, I feel like you can't blame musicians, actors, writers for entertainers, pe- entertainers. Like they're, for they're giving people what they want. Yeah, they meant. Oh, yeah, they're they're meant to like. My blame is never on the artist. Okay, good. Because so is, many, <laughs> my, so my many people love people. they love blaming media for people's actions. Like, is that the media oh, didn't hold that gun up to you? Yeah, it's like it's like that. you want to blame a video game for a person shooting a school. It's like no. You don't blame the you don't blame the media that they pay to ingest. You you still blame the person. Yeah, yeah. that's their responsibility. So if a at person the end of the day, they did it. Yeah, if a person enjoys listening to music that objectifies women and and says all kind of nasty things, that's that's their business. Yeah, that's their, right. But my point is that you know, artists never make anything popular. People make things popular. Right. Yeah. And so my issue is with people right now. <laughs> with the people. Yeah, that's really what my issue is. Well, just like I, I always used to tell my kids that whatever you let in your head is your your fault. Because I personally don't watch gory movies. And it's not that I'm afraid. I know it's a movie. Yeah. I know that's not real blood. I know all that stuff. But I don't let that in my head. You don't put it in I your don't spirit. put it in my heart. I don't yeah. put it in my head. And that's just me. You will never make a lot of money off Sandra. <laughs> at the movie theater anyway <laughs> we're going to we're gonna have to bring her back to yeah. talk more about that one. but hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode again we were talking about Fela Kuti and um, the father of he, the father, father of everything <laughs> <laughs> father of everything yeah, definitely the father of Afrobeat yeah. um, feel, feel free to tell us what you guys think Even send us an email just go to the website Afro Vibes Radio Houston or Afro Vibes Radio and uh, send us a little line. We are actually pretty good at responding to messages. Yeah. <laughs> or, again, leave a comment on social, Afro Vibes. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye, everyone. Take Bye. care. Bye. <laughs> Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed the segment. Make sure to check us out live to enjoy the full episode on Afro Vibes Radio Houston. Just download the app and make sure to check in on some of the latest and greatest. Me, your boy, Devo Primo. I'm out. <laughs>